Morning all, I just thought I'd show you a few of my updates, albeit cosmetic mainly, for the Royal Enfield Continental GT. As you can see here, this bike is only beautiful. But um, I've often toyed with the idea of selling it because I never ride it really. And uh, you know, uh, Mrs. Perry doesn't like it in the house anymore since the garage was built. So it's now in the garage. So I think I really do have to accessorize it to utilize it, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna start by showing you the first thing I've just bought for it. You can probably see it already. It's this here. Um, this is from a company called Trip Machine Company. I'll uh, pop up the website there on the screen. Uh, and this, I, I only got the one. You can buy them as a set, set of two for both sides. I prefer just the one because what you do lose, unfortunately, is that beautiful plastic panel with the Continental GT logo on from whichever side you choose to put the bag. Um, the bag comes with um, the, I'm saying the harness. It's not a harness as such. It's more like a metal bracket. Um, so you take that plastic cover off the bike. You put the metal bracket on. I'll tell you what, why don't you go and log on to my Instagram page? Because my daughter, Ava, who was doing the reel, very cleverly showed me how to do uh, a reel for Instagram. Uh, and it's all on their Instagram addresses, Wheelie Good TV as well. So I have a reel on there all about the installation of that. I will show you a few photographs here of it being installed, of course. Uh, now, before I show you what it can actually hold, uh, I have to say it was a bit of a bugger to install, but hey, that could just be me. Um, it took me about an hour to install. I had seen other videos on YouTube by that chap who's the Royal Enfield uh, aficionado, Stuart Fillingham, uh, and I think it took him about 20 minutes to install. Uh, yeah, it took me a lot longer than that. But anyway, as you can see, I got the job done. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It's a uh, fantastic quality leather. Um, what I will do is to show you exactly what I can fit in it. And this is why, I tell you what, why don't I come around this side? It'll be a lot easier. This is why I bought this bag. So I can, as you know, I make lots of videos when I go out on a motorbike. So the thing I need to carry on a motorbike is camera equipment. So I'm just pressing in the little studs there, as you can see. Now you can expand the bag's capabilities with these leather straps, obviously. And uh, so in there you have a, a little pocket. Actually, already I'm thinking that pocket will be great to put my filter kit in. Uh, and then that's all zipped up. Um, I haven't waxed this yet, but I am going to wax it um, just in case I do get caught out in the rain. This comes in a range of different colors. Um, I chose the black for obvious reasons. Um, what I will say uh, straight off, and I might touch on this again uh, when I go out for a ride and show you exactly what the bike looks like on the road with the accessories I'm gonna talk about in this video, what it looks like on the road with those accessories fitted, all done from the 360 camera, of course. I love this technology. Um, so what I will say straight off, whilst this bag was 120 euro for the single bag, I was rather caught out. I ordered this and, um, I'll show you this on the front windscreen here and the cross there. Excuse the odd few flies I was out riding last night. Um, that's called the headlamp cross. So I ordered those two things first of all for, well, the bag was 120 euro. The cross was 20 euro. Okay, 140. It arrived at my doorstep. Uh, this all came from India, had arrived at my doorstep here in Ireland and the delivery driver wanted another 60 euro. I have a bugbear about that. I hate that being caught out on the customs uh, cost at your doorstep when there's pretty much nothing you can do because you've paid for the items, you've paid for the delivery, it's there and the delivery man's there with his invoice. So I have a huge problem with that. When you order off Amazon, even eBay, uh, and a, a lot of other online shops now, they tell you what the customs charge is going to be at, at the checkout online. Um, now, I searched through the website of Trip Machine Company and indeed hidden at the bottom of a page somewhere on their website is a little note that you may be eligible for customs costs, but come on guys, sort that out. You know, if I'd known it was going to cost me 200 euro instead of 140 euro, I wouldn't have bought it. Okay, great products, but crap customs charges. I really, really have a problem with that, as you can probably tell. Anyway, back to the job in hand. Let's show you what I can fit in here. Now, as I love doing, uh, this isn't rehearsed, this is live. You know, when I do the odd bike review and everything, I always love to, uh, love to do my live impressions as if, uh, well, it's the first time for me and this is genuinely the first time. So what I normally take with me, my Insta X3, 360 camera, my DJI mic system that has all the accessories in the pack as well. 
my spare batteries for my Osmo Action 3. And what else do I have? Oh yeah, my filter kit, as I've already mentioned. I think I've already seen the, the place for that to go. Um, the other thing, I'm running out of hand space, let alone bag space. This is the pole for my Insta360. Now, whilst that would normally be attached to the bike somewhere, it would be nice if I got caught in a downpour to have the uh, luxury of putting it all inside the bag. Um, my spare Insta, or my spare DJI camera. There's so many different camera manufacturers now. I'm losing track them. Sun's just gone in. Time to take the filter off. Get that? Um, so the other thing is a spare battery for the Insta X3 and the waterproof cover comes with the bag. I shall demonstrate that once I've got everything inside the bag. And let's take a bike lock as well. Uh, that's the other thing I'm terrified of at the minute, certainly here in Ireland. Uh, and I know the same in England as well, because I read all the, the Facebook posts and everything. Bike crime is on the rise uh, and consequently so is our insurance premiums so what i will do i'll put this in the bag first because i don't want that sitting on top of all of the camera gear and scraping it so that's that in uh, pop the spare battery in I'll try and get out of the light there um, let's put the filter pack exactly where i thought it might go oh, i don't know ah yes that's fine there I um, just hope it doesn't bounce out, but this is all going to be locked anyway when I'm riding along. Spare batteries. In fact, you know what? Let's swap that. We'll put the, the batteries in there and we'll put the filters in there. I think that's a better fit. Let's see if the pole will fit. No problem. Um, right. The camera in there. I always put the lens towards a piece of leather or somewhere where it's not going to get scraped. So I'll turn that outwards. DJI kit. In fact, maybe that's just prompted me. I should probably put the spare camera inside a little camera bag. That's okay because it has a, a rubber cover protecting the lenses on that. Um, now, look at that. Uh, lots of space. And you know what? At a push, if I organized that a bit better and I wasn't just throwing it in for the purposes of this video, at a push, I could probably get, dare I say, a small puncture repair kit in there as well. Um, so. Maybe I need to elongate these, but that's a lovely, tight, snug fit. Um, it's, it feels absolutely solid, that. I just think it looks incredible on the bike. And now look at that. I'm able to go away and do what I do best, or certainly what I love doing most, uh, making videos. And one thing I really dislike about going away, which I've always thought on this bike, because there's been no luggage space or pannier space, I really hate wearing a, a rucksack or the sort of um, the waist belt. Uh, whilst they're fantastic and great utility, I just don't feel comfortable riding a motorbike with them on. It sort of offsets me balance or something like that. Um, it just makes me feel heavier when I'm on the bike and I'm feeling heavy enough these days, but we won't go there. So that's that. I'll just, if you stay there, Ava, I'll go and get the rain cover and we'll squeeze that on and see what it looks like. a lovely snug fit I think it looks great as well now top marks apart from the custom starters and I know I've touched on this already but I just love that uh, I know it's aesthetic and maybe I'm a bit of a poser but hey ho this is a cafe racer styled motorbike uh, and I think for the sake of 20 quid, I just love the cross. You wouldn't believe how many people on the Instagram reel when I posted this uh, said, oh, I couldn't live without my OCDs killing me. You've offset it. That's what I want to do. I did it on purpose. Things don't just happen by accident. You know, I personally love the fact that it's slightly offset. I don't want it to be sort of equal that way or straight up that way. I just like the fact it's sort of slightly offset, more authentic to me. Hey ho, each to their own, that's me, um, but for 20 euro and you can buy the perforated one or the non-perforated one and again in a, a range of colours. I really think it sets the front of the machine off. When I head out under the road any minute now, when I eventually shut up, you'll see how it all looks as we're riding along. And if you're wondering how I heard about this company, Trip Machine Company, uh, it was a subscriber who put me onto them. You see these uh, leather hand grips here. Um, 
Uh, you, well, you've seen me talking about these in previous videos, so um, I won't go in detail about these, but I was forever looking for the correct grip on these stock handlebars. I didn't like those sponge puppy things I bought off, Amazon's, uh, uh, off Amazon. So subscriber got in touch with me and said, try the leather grip from a company called Trip Machine Company. Uh, so I did, and I love them. I just think that they look amazing on the bike. You know, if I'd known now, I would have sort of probably coordinated the colour schemes a little bit better. But I quite like the sort of brown grip. And again, these come in a range of different colours. They are solid. I've ridden in the wet as well, uh, and your hands don't slip. And it's the perfect sort of width or the perfect grip for my hands anyway. Uh, they're not too big and they're not too skinny. The, the, the stock handle bar grips just felt as though I was holding a, a twig or something. <laughs> Uh, so these are just brilliant and there's a little bit of sort of sponginess in them as well so you can really tell when you have a good tight hold of them however I needed something to go with these so this is my next purchase I then came across these I thought what I do need is a good pair of leather gloves I think trip machine company do gloves as well funny enough um, so, but anyway another subscriber put me onto these these are made by gold top um, and I love these gloves. This model here that I have is the Viceroy model, 80 euro. And all of the customs and everything uh, is worked out for you at the checkout. So it's 80 euro, no customs actually. Um, but the delivery charge was a bit steep. I think delivery to Ireland was about 14 euro on top of that. I thought it was a bit steep. Anyway, they're amazing. They have the floating knuckle protectors. So it just gives your hand so much more movement. You don't feel as though you're wearing gloves with these floating knuckle protectors because, well, you just can't feel them on your knuckles. You can see in there. I just, I love that little feature. Uh, now, the fingers are beautifully padded. Uh, it's gorgeous cowhide leather, this very soft. Um, and you can see uh, it's got protection in all the right places. I would have liked protection on the knuckles, but then obviously that inhibits the movement of your fingers as well. Horses for courses, uh, for what I want tipping around the country lanes on a bike like this, this is, I think, more than adequate for me. And I really think it looks fabulous. Again, as you'll see when I go out with my Merlin Purton jacket on, uh, my brown boots and the jeans, I think it really looks the part. I really do. The other thing to add about these gloves is that they are silk lined, okay? So you haven't got leather rubbing against you. And dare I say it, if the leather was a little bit sort of, is permeable the right word when it rains and the water goes through? Is that the right word, Ava? Yeah, Ava's a university student. We're starting in one month's time. So to me, she's very clever. So I ask her things now, rather than tell her things. So yeah, silk lined, um, so it just it's beautiful on the skin. Uh, and I have to say, size-wise, they're very true to size. If you're an XL in normal gloves, then order XL from here. Um, what did I order? I ordered XL, funny enough, because I am XL in a glove. Uh, fits like a glove, imagine that. Um, now, the other thing, or the last thing I want to show you, I promise you, we will get out on the road very soon. This is the luxury of having somebody doing your camera for you means that I'm able to talk more. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now here's one I made earlier. Again, won't go into detail with this. Um, this is a bag from a Chinese company called Iron Jihas. I've recently done a full video all about this. So go and watch that. Just search my video list and you'll see a full video. It's a 50 litre bag. And that also goes on the back. Well, it'll go on the back of any motorbike uh, because it comes with four different harnesses and shoulder uh, straps and hand straps and everything. Uh, and the very clever thing about this bag, which I will touch on, if I can find it. Where is it? It does have... Oh, there it is. Look, it has an air vent. So when you've put whatever you want in the bag, you can squeeze all the excess air out of it and it'll crush down to exactly the size you need um, just to keep it sort of um, well windproof shall i say on the bike it's not going to flap around with all that extra material sticking out the side you can squish it all down to what you want uh, now i've cracked this joke a few times i'm going to crack it one more time i need one of these at the minute just to squeeze the excess air out of myself it's wasp time of year anyway talking about uh, getting buzzed i think it's uh, time to get out on the road i'm buzzing for it and welcome on board everybody. Now, rather than just riding around the block, 
and then showing you again how I can fit stuff in and out of the bag and what the bike looks like from the front on the 360 camera and whatever. Um, I've actually set up a filming mission or is it an assignment? I'd say let's call it a mission because it sounds more important. So normally uh, what I would do on a lot of my videos as you know is that uh, I'll head out uh, to a point of interest say so I always take the cameras with me and when I get there I film a bit whether it be a sculpture or whether it be well, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Um, I, I, I never usually just ride around for the sake of it and just to chat. Uh, I normally have somewhere in mind to go to. So today is uh, no less than that. So we're off to a place called Smithborough in County Monaghan. And I've heard that there are um, several tree carvings along the road there. Uh, you know that um, uh, disease which is affecting a lot of trees, is it the ash trees, I think. Um, so rather than the county council decided rather than pulling them all out of the ground and leaving a big open gap Take them down to the sort of root or about six or eight foot left and uh, Make them into carvings. So I've heard about it never seen them, but it's something I want to go and see so uh, I thought well, let's make today's video about that because then I'm really sort of crewing it for real how I would do on a normal uh, uh, day out when I'm off to film something and I will probably take the GS or the VFR 800 because of the storage space that I've made on those bikes so that's why I'm so keen to start using this bike even more like I mentioned there uh, it's just a sin to keep it in the garage uh, I do want to use it more I'm often toying uh, with the idea of selling it because I don't use it so um, what about using it some more <laughs> that to me seems like the uh, the best all-round solution and that's why uh, I've sort of um, went out and got the bag and accessorized it a, a few little bits uh, um, like the, the cross on the headlight and whatever else. Um, first off, I'll start by saying the gloves are fantastic. Great grip on that uh, leather uh, strap from the Trip Machine Company. But the gloves uh, from that company, goldtop.co.uk, they're absolutely beautiful. Solid grip. I'm not slipping at all. Really love these. and. Uh, because of that floating knuckle um, thing, <laughs> whatever you call it, design, let's call it a design. I need my daughter here to help me with the fancy words again. <laughs> because of the floating knuckle design, um, it really does feel like my hands aren't wearing big gloves at all. And let me tell you, they are very well padded. And I dare say, in the event of a fall, they would offer a good amount of protection. They are CE rated uh, to standard one. You can check all that out on the website. And uh, yeah, they were 80 euro. So very happy with them, as I am with the Trip Machine Co. Grip. Enough said about that. Let's take a look at the bag and how it looks like on the road. I'm saying the bag, I mean the wingman bag. I've left the INGS big luggage 50 litre bag at home because I just don't need that on a day out like this. But it does make it possible now to go away for a weekend on a bike like this, or indeed a week. 50 litres is a massive amount of storage. I could even get the laptop in there as well. Um, but anyway, today's requirements don't need that. But as you can see, I think the bag looks absolutely superb. My leg. Uh, is definitely touching it and when I put my foot down um, when I come to a stop I can definitely feel it on the underside of my um, what do you call that is that your glutes I think it is uh, on the underside of my leg not so much when I'm riding it's only when I put my foot down and uh, the first couple of times I've done that within this 10 minute ride so far um, it does feel a bit odd but then I just think it's a case of getting used to it it doesn't hinder me at all in terms of um, you know moving the bike around it just feels a bit odd that there's something there touching your leg when you're not used to it so delighted with the way that looks we'll um, see it exactly coming into uh, to its own when we get up to the filming location and then the cross on the headlight now surely this transports you straight back to the 1960s cafe race I've seen I just think uh, it's a wonderful little add-on for the sake of 20 quid it's a nice little touch I think and for those who don't know about motorbikes 
I'm not suggesting any of you don't know about motorbikes, but I mean, unsuspecting people who are watching you on a motorbike, I'm sure that little cross would definitely make the motorbike look much older than it is. Well, like a cafe, original cafe racer, rather than a 2021 bike. Just the little touches like that. Okay, so uh, we're heading up through one of my local towns, Coot Hill, into County Monaghan, and uh, the ride won't be long. Um, up into Smithborough. I hope it's worth uh, riding out. Well, even if it's not, I'm still enjoying the ride out, so of course it's worth it. What a wonderful day, by the way, isn't it? Not many days left like this, I can tell you this here. Autumn is uh, well and truly on the brink of the horizon here in Ireland. Certainly when I've been driving around over the last week, there's lots of uh, trees, lots of trees, lots of uh, leaves off the trees uh, filling um, the roads. These ones are okay. But I just love riding this bike. It's actually going in uh, for us. It's only its second service next week. Um, and um, well, I'll let you into a secret as well. I'm also looking at getting a set of knobbly tires on. I fancy the uh, the Michelin, the Anarchies. Is it the Anarchy Trails? Now, I know I'm not going to be off-roading. Again, it's an aesthetic thing. Um, it's just looks-wise. So I, I need something which is quiet on the road and obviously which is going to perform on the road because I'll be doing 0% off-road with this bike. It's uh, purely just a looks thing. So I'm looking around. In fact, if you have any suggestions for knobbly tyres for this, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I shall save the camera batteries and uh, wake everything up again when we get up to the sculptures. Okay, so we're just approaching Smithborough now. So from what I was told on the, um, the Google search, there should be uh, lining the roadway either on the way in or the way out of Smithborough. Anyway. Oh look, here they are. So let's just do a, um, a little drive past them first and then I'll stop and sort of do some shots and put a music sequence together. They are amazing, look at that. Oh wow. Wonderful. Just check there's nobody behind me here and I'm going to pull into the uh, service station here and we'll go back and uh, have a little look in detail. Oh look, there's an ice cream sign as well. <laughs> winner, winner. I just uh, park it up here next to the bin. Not in anybody's way then. I nearly forgot the whole reason for for coming out today. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I always do now. I go for the, the camera gear, so you can see me doing it for real here. I hope it looked good on the camera. Um, just leave the, the gloves off here. Do you know what I could do? I could even put the gloves in here once the, the gear is out. So I don't need the 360 anymore. That's what I was filming with on the way. Uh, I did cheat and stop and put it in there don't need any of this stuff that's the DJI what do I need um, bike lock I think I'll be all right I'm only just literally around the corner there on the pavement um, okay that's uh, of course the camera I need here so I'm looking at the entire contents of the bag thinking I don't need any of that because I do need this camera that's what I'm going to film it with uh, I'll use the the pole I use, the, which is the uh, 360 pole, I normally screw that into the bottom of the camera mount on this camera and it keeps it far steadier when I'm handheld filming stuff like that. So I can put everything I don't need <laughs> back in again. Back in again. However, that, was, uh, that wasn't a totally wasted exercise. I haven't completely lost me marbles because that was a, a good demo yet again of... Um, the stuff coming in and out of the bag. Um, now, with all of that stuff in, I definitely can't fit the gloves in. But, nevertheless, a good little demo yet again for you. Right, that is brilliant now. That really makes the bike usable. 
for the little films I make for this YouTube channel. Um, I can now go off on many more jaunts. I'm really delighted with this so far. Right, I'll show you these uh, sculptures. I'll probably set them to music because I know very little about them, so I can't chat you through them. Um, so I'll do a little music sequence. Off we go. <laughs> good are they and I love the way that they they depict the story of the local area with the wildlife the fishing and in fact one of my favorites is the the milk urn pouring the uh, the milk out because this area is famous for its creamery of course anyway one of the the best sculptures left until last or the best works of art is my Royal Enfield Continental GT especially now it's been accessorized even more Hope you enjoyed that folks, always great to have you along for a spin out, especially when there's something to see. And now that I can actually store the camera gear on board my Royal Enfield, expect lots more trips out on that particular bike. If you're not a member of the channel, become one. Great to see you again. This time next Saturday, I'll have another video out. 8 o'clock YouTube, be there. Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV.